Time for another aquatic slash aquaponic update. We're in the greenhouse, and as you can see, it's quite sunny today. Um, got the one door open. I think we're going to be popping the other door open real soon here because we are sitting on almost 90 degrees in here, and that's more than warm enough. One of my bees has come to hang out in here with us. Get to work, girl. Go back there and pollinate that tomato plant. So the big news is we have gotten all the plumbing done on the expansion. We still have to fill the beds, and that's been held off for for a while, uh, but I'll, I'll tell you about that in a second. But we got this uh, additional flood and drain bed in, and uh, our plan is to put a second one just like this right here, which we haven't done yet. This is what's called an aquarium siphon. All that is is a piece of pipe with this equal length ends. You turn it upside down, you fill it up with water, you put your hands over it, and you flip it over so it's full of water, and it keeps these two sides equal. Why? Because that one-way valve right there, we still ain't ripped that out yet, and it's not letting enough water through. So until we get the time to actually remove that, because it's a bit of a pain in the ass to fix that, it might require a completely new bulk bulkhead for the, uh, the solid separator. We're not sure. So we didn't want to get into it until we had all this other stuff done. Uh, but once that's done, that'll go away, and that second bed can go in there. And I know what you're thinking, like, well, how are you going to reach way back there? Right now it's a challenge. Uh, I had to do it last night, and I just climbed up, stood up here, and reached back there. But we're going to be building basically a deck that allows you to stand up there and easily access all four of the flood and drain beds. And that's just the best way to do it in here. Remember, we're dealing with a unique situation. We can't have a deep sump like most people do because I'd need dynamite to get in the ground more than the 10 inches we're already in the ground there with these tanks. So that's why that's that way. Um, the reason I've got the door closed and I'm bringing the temperatures up here, I'm trying to get the water temperature up. We have an ick infection, and that's why none of this new stuff that's been put in has actually got active water running through it yet. Uh, I've got a new product called the Python. Right there, you'll see it. Uh, water vacuum. I'm going to be using it for my tanks in the house, and with this little gadget right here, I use it for vacuuming. I used it yesterday. I was very impressed with it. Basically, that end right there goes out to a garden hose, and you hook it up, and you turn it on, and with no priming or anything, this thing starts sucking. And it sucks up all the nastiness off the bottom. And I did about a 20% water change yesterday getting ready for this treatment. And that water is so clear. Uh, and it was pretty nasty after I did that. But it's cleared up immensely. And I've been treating these fish with salt. And I'm starting to see a reduction in ick on them already with salt and raising the water temperature. But we need to get this up and going for this season with new fish in it. And I've got to eradicate this. So we're going to be using copper sulfate, uh, which some people go, oh my God, it's copper. Let go. And uh, we'll run that for about a week. We'll make sure everybody's completely clear, uh, clear of ick, and we'll do a couple water exchanges. And then I'll feel comfortable bringing new fish into the system. And we're going to talk about how we can do that in some other ways here in just a second. Uh, into this bed, I popped in some of my water crests that I'd, I'd, I'd rooted in my rafts. And when I did that, I Pluck some more watercress and threw it back in the rafts to root more. So I'm going to be eating watercress out of my brains for the rest of this year, the way this stuff's growing. Popped a couple peppers, four peppers in there, a couple red peppers, a couple jalapenos, and uh, two tomato plants. And, uh, boy, that bed is just going. I'm going to have to cut that. That's a parsley going to seed. and I'm just letting the roots develop. Parsley root's actually really good to eat. I need to lob that off about right there. But until we have something else to put in there, I'm just going to let it go. Uh, everything's looking good in here. Let's take a look in here. We've got some new stuff to show you. This cool stuff my buddy David came up with, too. So, our raft bed just continues to go and blow. I mean, we're starting to cut and harvest from this lettuce and uh, kale and, 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 and romaine lettuce. And you can see back here, I've got watercress that I'm rooting to, to continue to propagate more watercress. Remember, that watercress started as a living, wa living watercress plug uh, that I bought from Albertsons for about two bucks. And uh, yes, I've got it rooting over here too. Um, but that raft bed is just doing outstanding. Uh, I've got some fish in this tank. Uh, they're showing no signs of ick, which is a good thing. Ick, if you don't know, that's called white spot disease. It's bad news, like fish herpes, I guess you'd call it. Um, this tank right here is going to be a deep wicking bed. That's what this is going to be. So this is going to be a wicking bed dirt. So we said we were going to do three deep waters. We're going to do four deep waters, two on this end, two on the very far end. I'll tell you why in a second. But all the rest of these are going to be deep wicking beds like this one is. Just basically dirt uh, with water on the bottom, wicking uh, water up so that uh, you can grow anything in them. And we'll grow mostly vining crops and tall crops in the back and shorter crops in the front. 
And you see we got everything done, everything plumbed in yesterday. Took a day off from the podcast yesterday. Got them all plumbed in, all the stands set up, basically leveled on uh, cinder blocks. Keep them off the ground, keep them sinking in. Well, we're going to do these two deep water. And we're going to do that because one, more water in the system is always a good thing in my opinion. But the other reason is, if you look, what we did is we set and put a two-inch valve in right there. Okay? And then this is inch and a quarter pipe here. We put an inch and a quarter on both of the lines here. Well, what's that let us do? That means if we come home with 100 bluegills we want to put in the big pond or in this system or an aquatic system and they might have parasites or something wrong with them and we don't want to contaminate our existing system, we go right over here, we shut that valve. Once we shut that two inch valve right there, it no longer drains back into the, it then isolates these two tanks from the system. But what if I only need, it, I only need one? Well, if I only need one, um, I can actually isolate one or the other or both of these tanks that way as well because I can come here with this one and a quarter valve and I can turn that valve and then this tank is still tied into the system. Or I can turn the one quarter valve on that one and this is still tied into the system and that way that they're still isolated out. However, if I wanted to isolate both of them, I can shut that valve right there. I can put fish in one, the other, or both and we'll run a second pump in here, and these two will basically find level together. So this is now my isolation slash hospital tank, and if we get this stuff up and running, it will be a much easier thing to deal with problems like we have right now. Uh, if I had it up and running right now, what I would do is I would net all those fish in there, I would drop them into here, and I would treat that system with no fish in it since it's such a low population of fish right now. Ick needs fish to reproduce. If you take the fish away, uh, ick, as it re if it, what happens is it forms on the fish, it turns into a little white cyst, it comes out of that cyst, it falls to the bottom, it sits there, like think of it like a caterpillar in a cocoon, and then it, it, it transforms into another part of its life cycle, it goes in the water, it seeks a new fish host, it attaches and repeats the cycle. Well, when it wakes up, it's only got so long to find a fish. If it doesn't find a fish, it dies. So without the fish host, the ick goes away. So that gives us more treatment options, especially early in the year. And I can tell you how that happened. It happened because this winter we had two very harsh freeze episodes. We had the whole system shut down on us. The water got extremely cold. It stopped circulating. We lost the ability to keep water circulation in half the system. Uh, that's not going to happen to us again. We're going to put heat tape on all this pipe this year uh, before the next winter comes. But during that period of time, uh, we ended up with that ick infection, and it's not something you want in an aquarium, let alone an aquaponic system. But overall, things are looking great, and we got big plans. Big plans for the other system. Remember, this is the aquaponic system. Where we're going next is the aquatic system. So, as we go over here, we've got this garden bed system. It works okay. I just... You know, I'm, I, I'm really digging the aquaponics thing and the aquatics thing. And we've got our aqua, aquatic system here, which will be actually growing and kind of turning it into an aqu aquaponics system light, I guess. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, so those are six foot round tanks. They make those in an eight foot. Those eight foot sold 750 gallons a piece. I'm going to put two eight foot tanks somewhere in this area right here. And on both sides, I'm going to put basically a rail system where you can stack those tanks like we have in there without having to make individual racks. It'll cost a lot less money. Basically a 4x4 four four in the ground and a 4x4 four four in the ground and then you sandwich 2x4s two by, two by on each side of them with a lag bolt and uh, do them with cinder blocks into the ground since we can't really dig here. And then basically all we'll have to do is stack those on both sides, run some wire fencing that you won't even see, it'll be under there. And we can run nice picket fencing on both the front and the back of it and isolate those tanks from the ducts so they don't skank it up. We can take all this dirt in these beds and we'll harvest what's in here to replant. And we got a big pile over there of dirt we can harvest to kind of put those tanks at least a foot in the earth for some insulation. And then that will tie into our sump down there. So we'll have one, one feed line coming up here delivering water and returning and a second coming off the same pump going up there delivering water and returning. So we'll have two different sides to that system. 
either of which can be isolated at any time. And we'll put in mostly wicking beds on both sides of there. Since they're wicking beds, we can use organic solid fertilizers without over nutrient our whole system, but the water will still be helpful. And we'll put in some flood and drain, mainly just for filtration to help keep everything looking good. Everything is looking pretty good. Hope you enjoyed today's update. And uh, we'll have more coming to you soon. You can see the duckweed is well on its way back to life in that large pond. We'll help clear everything up soon. And uh, the ducks and I will catch up with you soon.